yeah, it's Father's Day. Um, I wanted to just, you know, uh, ask you about how your dad's doing and, um, and yeah, if there's anything you like open to, sh to sharing. Yeah. Happy Father's Day to all our dads. I guess, you know, they're out there. Um, happy Father's Day to my dad. Um, he'll probably call me sometime later on today. So as you know, my dad caught, um, you know, COVID-19 while he was in jail around March. He battled it for a few, uh, for about a month. They had him on a ventilator twice. I think they intubated him once, and a couple other things happened. And this is all due to some heart issues that he had um, some years ago. After I think that month, they, they finally, you know, they kept testing him, and then he came. Um, uh, he, they they rid he was rid of COVID-19, but his immune system, and everything was like weak and like crazy weak. So. He was at a hospital that was um, not in the jail, but they just sent him back to the hospital that's in the jail, which is like 10 times less the care, you know. So he, I, I talked to him actually a couple of weeks ago, and he was like, you know, yeah, the care here is terrible. He was like, I can't walk, you know, but 10 feet without losing my breath, so I'm still just, you know, kind of in this um, uh, in this hospital in his bed. Um, but he sounded like... I talked to him like two or three times. He sounded like he was starting to get better. He did sound weak every time, but he just sounded different, um, you know, to me. And I was actually going to post a picture of, of him today because somebody had snuck and sent one to me when he was in the hospital with his thumbs up that he was doing okay. But mm. uh, so he's in the he was in the ER uh, a day ago. They rushed him out of the, the jail, put him back in the ER at that same hospital. <clears throat> From what I have heard from my mom she said that he's back at the jail now um, but I'm not a hundred percent sure and we've been trying you know ever since uh, everything kind of happened to him actually we've been trying for years to try and get his um, sentence exonerated because kind of the way that he was put in jail was really fucked up in the, in the first place you know which is a whole other thing um, I'm, I'm grateful to have, you know, kept a, a relationship, you know, with my dad and being able to talk to him and still, you know, go and hug him when I can. And he's been, he's such a, such a big supporter of me and he just loves everything that I'm doing. He loves his nieces, loves his, I'm sorry, loves his grandkids. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, I get like, so, you know, solidification when I talk to him, you know, that I'm, I'm doing, you know, what it is I need to do out here. Wait, you're not, so, you're a father? Are you a father? He loves his me? No, no, no. My sister has okay, four, okay. Uh, well, she, has, yeah, she has four kids. Three, I was like, um, I'm nieces. unaware. Okay, yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> no, I, I want to be. I'm going to be one one day. Um, so look on that. But honestly, because I have, I have three nieces and one nephew, and they don't have any father figure, mm. any dad, uh, it's just my sister and her kids, you know, so. That has been, you know, one of the main pushes is why I'm trying to, uh, I, I try to do good, excel, you know, work hard, and I and, and still be weird with my nieces and nephews because I don't want them to think that I'm just all, you know, stern and straightforward. Like, they know I just do crazy stuff, right. and they know that, like, I have multiple disciplines, and I want them to believe that they can do any and everything that they want, so, you know, since they've been born, it's been my goal to really just heavily influence them in the most positive way that I possibly can. Because I have to tell you, they are they face they face more they're facing more adversities than I've ever been in. Um, and they're and not in not in more of a um, uh, a metaphorical. It's a it's a literal. You know, they kind of deal with a, a bunch of uh, variables in their life that are really challenging them. And they seem to be, like, pulling through really, really well. But, you know, so I just keep a really big watchful eye. I won't go too much into detail about it, but they're 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 great kids. But I, I just I keep a really, really decent eye on them. Um, one of the things that's disturbed me a, a lot about sort of this country, this world, is, is how, um, how white people, society doesn't realize the degree to which the criminalization of blackness it mm -hmm. destroys uh family or can or has has destructive qualities to it yeah. you know you were five when your father was mm -hmm. incarcerated like yeah. 
I, I, you know, I can't imagine my life without my dad present, you know, and it's just, that's like I was saying, you know, when I was making the film about you, just sort of how it is. So, um, I'm looking at a different life experience here, <laughs> you right. know, and like right. trying to do my part to like depict it, but like, w you know, we, we have different. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. It's story. definitely, it's definitely uh, really bad. Um, you know, not, it's, it's definitely not bad, you know, having your dad around and definitely with uh, a dad who doesn't want to be around you because that happens way more often hmm. than i no, every way more often, and I've seen it more often. I mean, with family, with friends, with just watching, and it seems like it'll. I, I see it more in the in African American community, but I also still see it, you know, in the in just yeah in the white community more. Well, it's probably I see it in the white community and black community, uh, Asian community barely see it. Um, Hispanic community, maybe, but I mean, nevertheless, it's still, you know, something that, that, that happens, you know, especially if you grow up um, without somebody to just even just kind of teach you those little, you know, weird things. And I didn't really realize how super bad it was until one day I had, I had, I had hated my father for like six months one time. And this was based off of, uh, I had got fired from this job. And at this job, I was, um, they had provided me housing. So when they fired me, um, they told me uh, that I had to, um, you know, move out. So I had to move out, find a new place. So I'm going through, like, this new new ordeal, and I don't know how to handle it. And I think I needed to, like, shave my face, or, and I didn't know how to shave my face. That, like, set me off on, like, this whole, like, I needed a dad. I needed somebody. I needed, like, I was just, like, I was, like, in this weird mental pain. And so I, my dad would call me, and I didn't answer for six months. I just and I just built up this weird ass anger. And I think one day I finally like told somebody about it, and I told my granddad, and he talked some sense into me. And I finally just had a conversation with my dad, and I opened up to him about it. And ever since then, it's you know it's been better. But I, I'm glad I had that conversation. I'm glad I kind of felt that because at that point he was. Just, I, I was just feeling like he left me, mm. you know, and that's probably, that's, that was exactly how all those other people felt when their dad or their father, you know, didn't want to be in their lives. But that shit has been lasting for them for their entire life. Right. Where I just had a brief, you know, lapse of just, sure. you know, kind of uh, mental instability, you know, but, that mental instability and for some other people is them. And again, you know, mm -hmm. having incarcerations or deaths or murders, all these things have these, you know, very trickle down uh, issues that, that, you know, majority of white America, you know, doesn't want to face or can't face. I don't really know what it is or why, you know, even just the basic understanding but i think it's really fueled by a lot of fear and a lot of i don't give a shit it's um i think it's a it's a culpability i think that white america is creating this situation and they know it and they don't want to admit that it, and and you know it's systemic it's not like individual you know mm -hmm. you know it, but when you look at it you know thing you know it's just like no like this is created yes. by people and sustained by people who are accepting this as okay yeah and the easiest way to do that is to uh pretend you're apathetic when really i think it means it's just like killing your soul somehow i mean you know like that's just sort of i don't know yeah well I'm, 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 <laughs> i think it's cool to, i think it's cool to pretend because uh, i did in the beginning that was kind of my whole thing about engineering i was like well fake it till i make it and mm -hmm. you know so in the beginning i didn't know what it was but you can fake that you're empathetic you'll you'll then probably start to turn empathetic so that's, yeah oh, that's a that's good a, that's, a, that's a good start for me that's a good turn of i said uh they pretend they're apathetic and oh, oh actually oh. but i'd prefer i'd prefer to because i get dark too quick like i i yeah no pretend you're empathetic first and then just keep going from there <laughs> like, just so you know it's um yeah what's you what's you feeling about this moment um uh 
you know, with sort of like the the national um, mm -hmm. city by city uprisings and and like and you have those incredible photos from Freddie Gray. Um, you know, have you been out there? Has have you? Do you feel like uh, this is sort of comparable or? Um, um, or is it going to change I mean, anything? <laughs> I mean, when all of the uprising stuff, you know, recently just kind of happened, I mean, you know, and then definitely kind of happening while COVID was happening. I think a lot of us are definitely going to be traumatized if, if, or some type of, you know, post-traumatic stress, you know, syndrome as far as like what was going on and, and things that are just happening. It was just, I just, it was just so just surreal. I just couldn't, I was just having a hard time just watching stuff. Sometimes I would watch it and it would just, and then, you know, I would watch, listen to the president and keep up with the news and that, that was just like, I was like, wow. And you just like, yo, what the fuck? And before um, George Floyd, um, you know, was, was murdered, um, by a police officer, I had reached out to um, to Dovecote, you know, to, to be in their um, in their art show, and they were like, yeah, you know, you can be in it. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I was, you know, seeing my girlfriend, I think I was thinking about like what pictures I wanted to use, and I, I had these gray gray images. I have like like 500 images that are just exceptional you know, from a journalistic standpoint. Best, one of the best bodies of work that I've ever produced. But I never did anything with it because at the time I was, uh, well, I'm still friends with Devin Allen. Um, he used to come to, uh, you know, service photo all the time and we talk and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, when everything kind of happened, a lot of the spotlight was on him. And, you know, I was happy for him. But I, that, I didn't want to, you know, release anything because it wasn't, I, I didn't feel like, I, I didn't need to because he was already doing the job. So I held on to him, you know, and that's, that happened in 2015. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I finally got the chance. Um, mind you, it's still before George Floyd. We're still just kind of going through COVID. We're still just trying to find coping mechanisms just to, you know, live everyday life. So I was like, all right, I'm going to have an art show. You know, I've been working hard. I'm a, I got some stuff. I want to try and do it. So I picked out the, those uh, two images of the, the dirt bike boys. I love those pictures, favorite pictures. And then um, I was like, let me try and, I want to display, you know, maybe some of my stuff for, from the Freddie Gray stuff. But I had always been reluctant because some of that stuff was, you know, was so damning. That one picture of, you know, the guy that was just like this with that fire. Like, every time I look at it, I just remember, like, where I was when that shit happened and what, like, what was going on. There was another photographer getting attacked at the same time. People were just stealing cars, just robbing. They were robbing a liquor store all, like, in this area that you saw this fire. And then on the other side was this blockade of police, and I couldn't go past them. And because I had already saw the photographer got attacked, I was like, I can't. But so anyway, so I was like, all right. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I looked through all of the pictures, and I was like, I'm going to take these three photos. So I took, you know, the one. And it's cool because my girlfriend picked up the one with the guy with the middle finger. That was, that I actually, I didn't even think about that one. But I was like, okay, that, that is cool. So I got that one. And I got the other one. And then, actually, I'm going to talk about this in a second. But my favorite one was the actually with the guy holding his arms up with the flag behind him. The thing is, that flag is upside down. That flag, um, you know, is, is uh, meant for, like, the fallen um, <laughs> police officers. But it's upside down, which kind of, you know, is an ad in inadvertently um, – kind of a, not necessarily disrespect, but, you know, I guess to expose the injustice of just this whole everything that's going. I'm going to get back to that one. So I had decided on these photos. Um, I think I put prices on them initially or was about to, like, price everything. It was going to be, like, relatively modest. Like, I don't even know how to, like, price stuff or whatever. I price it just for materials, labor, and, you know, maybe the, the work that goes into it. I didn't think about it hard enough. So then George Floyd happened. And then I was like, oh, man, all this stuff happened. I'm watching it. And then I had, um, I was like, well, shit, I got these photos that's going up. 
I don't want to sell these pictures because I don't want to profit off of, you know, the right. demise or the death of somebody. I, I would love to just display them, you know, just so people can see them. And that's, that's what I wanted to do. So, so I, I emailed the person back and I was like, hey, can we put these up for zero dollars? And they were like, something about the website wouldn't allow them to do zero, so they had to put it up for one dollar. And so I was like, I'm not selling a picture for a dollar. Right. So I was like, first I was like, well, I'm just gonna put them on there for like some obscene amount of money, so no one buys it. And at first I was gonna put a million dollars, but then I was like, oh, I'm not going. That's crazy. Um, so I don't know where I got the number six from. So I, I, well, maybe I did two and then four. So then I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll just do. I was like two thousand, four thousand, six thousand. <laughs> and so I put those numbers there because I had wanted. I was. I didn't think anybody was going to buy them. I was like, I don't think anybody's going to buy these like photos because they're crazy expensive, um, and they're you probably find them online. But I mean, what I would produce and give to somebody if they purchase, you know, those pictures, it would be absolutely uh, breathtaking. Like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Curated piece of art that um, my entire soul and will go into. Right. Um, so, you know, I sent the email and I told my girlfriend I was going to make these things, these prices. And she was like, okay. And I was like, well, I, don't, I was like, I really don't want them to buy them. And I was like, all right, well, what if somebody does buy them? I'll just give half the proceeds to, like, you know, their Black Lives Matter um, organization of choice. Mm -hmm. So I put that, you know, in the description. <clears throat> and um, so I told that to the people. They, they set up, you know, everything. Uh, but they had like a, a character limit on their description, and I have been going back and forth with them about you know the, the descriptions because a couple of things were getting mixed up, and it got to this point where everything was like 99% perfect, and I was like, all right, okay, I'm just gonna go with that. I don't feel like telling them to fix it, even though I probably should have, <clears throat> because on the and this goes back to that image of the flag and the black in the back, and the description I described or I defined what that flag meant. But then I also had stated that, but this flag is upside down, you know, for your own interpretation. But that sentence didn't put, get put in there, mm. right? So uh, yesterday happens, and I had this meeting with um, the Aero team, which is the Aero, uh, it's the Aerospace New Aerospace Engineering program that we're trying to start here at Morgan, and I'm a part of their rocketry team, so we're we're building a rocket. And also, I've been tasked with kind of coordinating this organization, um, this new organization, I mean, Umbrella, that is like a minority initiative to just, you know, trying to get students more into, into space and get them into just science, you know. So I wanted to make it like a multi-department uh, uh, kind of like infrastructure. So I have these meetings on Friday uh, with my two advisors, and they're always so good. And then my girlfriend came upstairs uh, after my meeting, and she was just ecstatic. And I was like, what? She was like, go to the website. Go to the website. And I was like, <laughs> okay. All right. So I, I go to the site, and I go check to see whatever the hell she's, like, talking about. So I'm going, and I'm looking. And I was like, I don't know what you're going to be looking at. She's like, look, no one can buy this other photo or these two photos, the ones you had up there. And I was like. I was like, what? what are you... <laughs> so I started, I was like, wait, I was like, okay. So I'm like checking, I'm like clicking, I'm like going around. I'm like, so she's like, I think somebody bought these pictures. Someone purchased. Yeah. And so I, I think, I'm not sure yet because I haven't gotten any word back from um, Dovecoat. And I, I guess I'm, they'll notify me because there was a lot of artists on there after the event and start doing the distribution in that kind of sense. But those, there are two photos on there that no one else can add to a car. Huh. And it was, you know, the one of the photos that was 6K and then the other one was two. But the other one, the one that I had liked, no one bought that one. And <laughs> I think it was because it was missing that that descriptive part, that Oops. one that um, cause they just said, give the definition of what this was. And because of what's going on, no one's not necessarily giving any thoughts about the police, you know, so it kind of 
made me look like I was, at least I think looked like I was like rooting for the police, but so I digress. But anyway, right, right, huh? Well, yeah. Wow. Congrats. Wait, what was the event? Is this the Juneteenth or is this the Juneteenth? Okay. This is Juneteenth thing. But so the the the, the thing is, I, I I had a mental breakdown yesterday. After that, I kind of I ball crying for like two hours. I went home. Me and my girlfriend were supposed to, you know, take that drive. I went home and I just, I just couldn't get up. And I was just thinking about like everything that was going on, and you know, because remember initially, I didn't want anybody to buy those pictures. Right. I didn't. I just wanted them to just be seen. I didn't want anybody to purchase them. Um, and I think when I saw that somebody was purchasing them. So many questions ran through my head. Who was purchasing them? Why are they purchasing it? What is this? It was just I don't know. It was like a it was like a sensory overload. Hmm. Um, because I've been doing so much, so much positive shit lately in in these crazy times. You know, like I said, I'm working I'm literally working on a Hubble Space Telescope right now. Right. The fucking thing that's in the sky. Um <laughs> building rockets with another organization. I'm trying to, you know, help build another organization to help kids. I'm an engineering student who's, like, doing absolutely amazing. Like, Lockheed Martin keeps calling me. Not keep, well, they haven't called me in, like, a, a month or so, but they did offer me this really sweet position. Like, so it's, like, all these, like, good things were, like, just going on. And I'm just, like, freaking out. Hmm. I'm just, like... I don't know. Like, I'm just, like, having, like, this conniption. And so I talked to my friends you know, through text, and they brought me back, but even, even still, I'm still, like, I, I don't know, but. Hmm. Like, confused, or, or, uh, a little, I mean, like, there's something about producing art, at least for me, that feels like it's, you know, it, it, it comes directly from the deepest mm -hmm. parts of me, you know, and so, like, um, when someone touches that, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's intense, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's like, I mean, I'm probably still confused. I think I'm just confused because there's so many underlying questions with it. And I think I'm probably just confused, you know, because I, I really didn't want anybody to buy it. Um, and I think, you know, when somebody did buy something of, you know, to have $6,000 and then to, to spend it on a photo. You know, just kind of wonder who this person is and why they want it. And, I mean, I'm hopefully they want it because they support it. Um, but chances are this person's probably white. Mm -hmm. You know, and so then I'm like, you know, in my head I'm like, yo, I have to have a conference with you before I even give you this photo because. I don't, I don't want this. I just want to make sure this message is understood. I just, it's like a concern. Like, it's like, you know, it's just, it's just strange. I think I just probably, if someone did purchase those photos, I just, I just need to talk to them and just feel okay, you know, about, about it. You know, money is not to me, like, I mean, money is cool to have and, you know, I, I'm, working hard to get to a place where I can just have money and not think about it, but it's not something, at least for me, that I've looked to give me that, that ultimate gratification. Right. You know, I can make, you know, a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars selling drugs, but at what cost, you know? So I, I think it's, I think that was, that's kind of the factors. Like what's the reasoning and the rationale behind this, this purchase, you know? And I'm probably thinking, you know, too deep for the intro, but I don't care. I need to know and I need to, you know, understand um, what it is. So, yeah, I'm just confused if, if that's, hmm. I, I still don't have an answer for it. Right. Well, I've, um, I've noted, uh, cause we, we talked about your, um, photos, uh, last time we hung out and, uh, you know, I remember just sort of that you, were protective of them you were um like they they m meant something more than you felt you were able to uh 
convey at that time or something like you 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 like had vibed that like you wanted to be sure to share them when it felt right Um, yeah 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 and i i didn't attend any of the well i attended a a protest that morgan state had um a couple uh, last saturday i think you know it was pretty organized you know everybody we kept their distance for the most part, um, but I didn't. I couldn't attend at all of that other stuff that was happening. Right. Yeah. Because I was, I was trying. I was getting the. I was getting that feeling back. That that shit was scary. And when they were just fake shooting shit at us, and then I was watching them deliberately shoot shit at just any and everybody. Oh no. I I distinctly remember trying to jump into someone's news van because they were shooting in our direction. And they wouldn't let me in the goddamn van. So I had to, like, run and duck and... Oh, Jesus. Was, yeah, I was... I couldn't go back up there. Wow. Not this time. Not in that Not in that capacity. That's, um... That's... I mean, that makes all sorts of sense. Like, uh... uh I was out there filming with my camera and everything, but, you know, this is not a repeat in any re- regard of anything traumatizing for me, you know? It's, mm-hmm. it's very much a like, and, you know, I think there's a, a, a huge swath of like the white community that has hopped on this moment and been like, you know, we're fed up with be with our part in creating this system. We, but we don't know what to do or sort of thing. But like, um, uh, there have been sort of like underlying undercurrent sort of like, uh, experiences that are not represented and not rec you know like that I, I feel like you know even as someone who's really spent a lot of time you know dealing with uh inequity and thinking about it and talking to people with all sorts of different experiences like i know i am you know emotionally sheltered and protected in in ways that uh um allow me to you know this isn't yeah. re-traumatizing anything for me and- and we do too. Like we, we get emotionally sheltered and compartmentalized and do all that kinds of stuff too. You know, we might not think about it um, on a on a time being because we don't want to think about it because it's fucking horrible. It's terrible stuff to really think about and try and digest that shit. Yeah. You know, but what? But the unfortunate part is that we don't have to be thinking about it for shit to be happening to us. Right. Like it'll just happen. And then it forces us to, to think about it. And that's uncomfortable. Like that's, it's, it's weird. You know, I've had issues, um, even though I'm pretty, you know, I'd like to think that I'm pretty, um, uh, pretty, um, monotone when I'm, uh, being pulled over or something like that and very respectful and responsible and, you know, not getting in trouble. I mean, dude, I, I've been pulled over. One time I got pulled over by the police chief of Baltimore City, and I know I had just got finished smoking a J and drinking, like, two things of wine, and this dude let me go with no, no nothing. And that has happened actually more than once, unfortunately, but I don't, I have, I mean, that's my own personal kind of experience, but then I've only had, like, one or two experiences where I was just, I felt, you know, violated in that kind of sense, but, um, it's all know, we don't want to think about it. I don't think none of us really want to think about it, black, white, mm-hmm. whatever it is, you know, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow, but, you know, the, one of the, the things about, you know, getting over your fears is to try to take them head on, and I guess this kind of goes back to faking it until you make it. Hmm. You know, though, also like it builds you in a way, you know, like I, I don't know if uh, I, I agree with fake it till you make it in that context, no, I, I, I got you. <laughs> you know, it's like it's no, a metaphor. <laughs> actually you're, you're standing up, you know, like you're, you're kind of like finding your um, finding your voice or finding your uh, mm-hmm. your integrity. Anyway, thank you for for this whole conversation. I, I'm, yeah, no uh, problem. I, I saw your Instagram post yesterday, and I was like, you know what? I've I've been meaning to revisit the Giovanni st- uh, mm-hmm. Giovanni story as a film, but also reconnect with you. <laughs> yeah, I show people I show people that film all the time, man. Yeah, it's 
It's pretty spot on. Yeah. Um, that's that's I have it. I have it on my YouTube page. Um, I mean, I I appreciate you. I'm... Man, thank you. I <laughs> I would. It's just it's amazing. I appreciate you kind of you know for taking the time to you know ask me questions and you know find out you know things about me. Oh yeah, man, it's a privilege. I um you know it really uh was I mean I guess credit goes to Iris um for for that really. Lady. <laughs> um but good stuff well um it, it's it's really is uh cool to listen to uh you talk about what's up in your life right now and and uh <laughs> reflect on past moments and everything so uh I, I, thanks alex I, I i i appreciate your uh your consistency your <laughs> consistency your persistence it's it's very welcoming and very um yeah, I, I love it. So cool. As always, man, it's always good to chat with you. Thank yep. you, man. <laughs> oh. All right, you. Um. Uh. Happy Father's Day to your, to you, your dad, your stepdad. And Thanks, man. Yeah. And are you not a dad, are you? Not yet. No. I don't okay. Know. <laughs> yeah. Happy Father's Day to all your dads and your granddads and and everybody, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 